Hey, what is up, guys? I am Hippie, and I want to welcome you back to day two of the seven day spectacular. We got another spooky story for you guys, told by my mom again. And uh, if you guys are wondering how she has so many spooky stories, she has a crazy family. So, <clears throat> so we have two stories, two separate. Well, no, one one story today. Maybe we'll get to another one tomorrow. So, I'm gonna give a quick teaser. Today, she's going to tell the story of her mother, a witch, and a, haunted house. and a haunted house. Okay, go ahead. So this is the same house that we lived in out in the country, and it was way back in the 1800s, and it was a working farm, and something happened to one of the houses that were there. They had some type of fire or something, so they built up closer to the road, and that's the house that we moved into. First, my grandfather had owned it, and then he couldn't keep it. He was getting older, so my family decided to move in with him. And one thing you need to know about my um, mother's side of the family is they have practiced witchcraft for, I would say, a couple hundred of years as far as... A couple as, centuries, would you say? A couple hundreds of years. All throughout the ladies or, or through the guys? Through the too? ladies, as far as I know. My mm. mother... Uh, aunt and my great grandmother and as far as I know my great grandmother mm -hmm. practiced white witchcraft and my aunt and my mother practice dark witchcraft. So tell them real quick tell what is the difference between black and white witchcraft? White is for good. Um, so like what if you wanted somebody to have a, a good birthday you would practice white witchcraft? Or marriage you would want oh, okay. So it's a good self, ceremony before love, something. Self, okay. Um, Good harvest, and then, and then black magic? is for evil to happen to somebody, right. and they say you have to be careful. So because like voodoo dolls and stuff like yes. that. Yes, seances. And Correct. Okay. And they right. say to be careful because if you practice black magic, you have the chance. If you are not doing it right, you don't have the right people there. It will come back on you. It can curse your house. It can cause death. Uh, just sort of like boomerang back and and work against you. So. What we're going to start with with this house is there have been three gentlemen that had died while living in this house. Did you know Did you know any of them? First one was my grandfather. After two okay. years of living there, he ended up dying of cancer and um, went in for gallbladder surgery and just unexpectedly never came back. But did he die in the house or did he die in a hospital? He died at the hospital. Okay. He slipped at the house on ice, went to the hospital, never came back. The second one is 1979-1980. My father went out on one of his usual truck driving runs and was killed on his way home. His semi was coming down a ramp in Lapeer, Michigan, flipped hauling steel, and he was crushed and killed inside. Then in the year, my mother, after deciding she was going to remarry, had a... Can I use names in here or no so they can verify? For what? For the, the men's names. Or, because um, his family might not be too happy if we release it. Even I would just they're... say his first name just in case. Okay. Well, They'll probably No one ever will probably see it that knows him. His name is Jim, and uh, he ended up having a heart attack at the bar. Um, but these were three people I know of for sure. And my mother, after a while, it just seemed like, you know, things were uh, really going bad at the house. Uh, we had had fires. Uh, my niece ended up buying the house after we moved. We just wanted to get out of there. We lived there for like 15 years from when I was like um, 10 years old until I was 25. My family owned that. We sold it to my husband's niece and her husband, and they live there to this day. But this is what history we have learned. Her sister, Casey, had it checked out, and there was a fire that almost burned that house down to the ground in the 1800s yeah. um, when her sister, Chris, moved in, and they were redoing everything. They had three fires before they could get everything under control. But what the weirdest thing was, my mom had someone come in and said there were three spirits that were living in the house. She did the things from... Was this after all three people died? Yes. Okay. And one was an Indian, one was a lady, and I cannot remember who the other one was. I never saw anything. I never heard anything. But when Chris moved in, her brother Chuck 
would not stay upstairs by himself. He kept hearing knocking. He kept hearing footsteps. He kept hearing scratching. Um, Casey will not go into the house today. Chris actually had a psychic check out the house. She said the house is cursed. Oh. But what really, really disturbed me was um, there is a basement in the dining room that leads downstairs, extremely oh. dark, all done up with rocks and mortar and everything. This is old house. It was built in the early late 1800s, early 1900s. Children would fall down those stairs all the time or be pushed. We don't know. I bet you there was six to eight. And my mother had a boyfriend at the time. His name was Grant. He fell down those stairs, cut his head open, and actually had to go to the hospital. It was that bad. My mother had not heard him fall. That would have been the fourth male in that house that, for, that we know of that have died. But this is what disturbed me after... Once we had moved here to Colorado from Michigan, mm -hmm. and the house, like I said, stayed in the family. Casey was telling me that Chris had three daughters that were um, living there, and her two older ones um, had little playmates, they said, that lived under the bed. One was Colleen, mm -hmm. and what? Bobby. The other one was Bobby. And they would play with them, they would scare them, they would hurt the girls. Chris said when they would go outside and sit on the swing and they would pretend to push the swing that their friend was on it, she said it scared her because the swing looked like it had weight on it. When the kids entered school, then the friend sort of just disappeared. But as the kids started getting older and started breaking away from this imaginary friend thing, the kids would come in saying that they were scratched, that they were smacked. Their hair was pulled. Chris couldn't uh, see anything, but she was really afraid and concerned that there was something in the house. She tried to get her husband, Ted, to move. He refused. They live there to this day. And when people walk into the house, some of them say they can feel it. There are some of their family members that, like I said, absolutely refuse. So we did that. They like what? They get like sick when they feel sick when they go in. They just feel really uneasy. They're right. scared. Someone's looking at them. They feel like somebody's near them. And so we did some research of old um, legends, like of, folk tale from from of the name Colleen and right. the name Bobby. Bobby. And I am going to let Hippie tell you what we found. So we just basically did a Google search for. The names, Tani and Bobby, folktale, uh, and stuff like that, and a couple of different searches. And what we basically think came down to was um, uh, old, like, Norse folktale. Because we went with last names. Right, of, uh, of the names Bobby and Connie. And they came back as the Angel of Death and the Grim Reaper were some of their nicknames, they said. So, and there was a lot of stories on there that people had written about kids under the bed ne being named uh, Bobby and Connie uh, and kids being taken under the bed, like just kids, kids disappearing, disappearing and never coming back. So we thought that was, that was a little bit strange. And scary that each one had a friend. That each one had a friend, right. And Chris had lost two babies um, before her two girls were born and it just so happened she just happened to get pregnant and then get pregnant right after the second one so we and all in this house and there has been several children that have been born in this wow. house several miscarriages we have taken it back it is just like the lady said cursed divorces uh, deaths uh, alcoholism drug abuse uh, Physical abuse, sexual abuse. I mean, this house just has had just lots of bad juju, bad in it. And we have checked every religion and race, and it comes up that way back as far as what 1300. This Sometimes Connie further, and Bobby. Further back, yeah. That's where they got the Bobby, the boogeyman. And you can go and do some research yourself. But it just sort of alarmed us. She's um was even going to have the house blessed, but she was afraid if she did that, um, she might disturb something if there is something in the house. Um, when we moved, we never had any activity after that. We moved from Michigan to Colorado. Um, like I said, I never saw anything. I don't know of any of my brothers, uh, too old or too younger, that have ever saw anything. Um, we did have one account when I was a little girl, and it was 
early in the morning on the farm when we used to go to school and the bus driver swore to God with some of the kids on the bus that they saw what they thought was my mother with a candle in her hand floating from our house across the street to an old abandoned house that hadn't been used in I'd say 50, 60 years and they went back to school and one time, and, and they told everybody this, and one time when I got mad at the kids on the bus, they were making fun of me or teasing me, and I told them if they did not stop, my mom was going to put a curse on They went home and told their parents their parents reported it to school and I actually had the school calling my mother. So what did this boss with X amount of children? I have no idea. I didn't even hear the story. My aunt had told me years later that the school had come to my mother and reported that this is what the bus driver and the kids saw. So what did they see? I have absolutely no idea. Was it an apparition they saw? Did we get into a haunted house? Is it still haunted? Is it still cursed? How many people have died there before us? And it sounds like they have something against men. Um, as far as we know, no children have uh, died there, but several children have been injured. My uh, brother Tom was almost attacked by a bear on a horse and knocked him off and broke a couple of his ribs. Then my brother David was hurt quite a few times from all kinds of accidents that happened on there. But none of us had ever, like, broken an arm or anything like that. And we lived next to a creek, which here is the, the story. I did almost drown in the creek one time when it was flowing. But is that the area? We, we just have no idea. We have been trying to find history going back as far as we can, and we just only can find bits and pieces that's mm. it but as far back as we can go of the families that have been there they like i said ended in divorce death uh just i mean really bad so far chris and her husband ted are still living there they start are you know they're alive their kids as far as i know have had nothing major happen except for these two little uh Bobby friends, and Connie. Bobby and Connie, that lived under their bed and used to play with them up until kindergarten age and then slowly um, just faded away. So it just makes me wonder, if there, did my mom bring something there? Uh, did she just open a door there doing her Ouija boards or witchcraft or, you know, whatever you believe, we welcome your comments since it's Halloween. Your stories um, as well. This is a true story. This is not one of the guests that this is true or not. This is this, true. This is the stuff that happened while I lived in the house and why our relatives still live in the house. Okay, and just to give a quick wrap-up, my grandmother was a strange character, so I wouldn't put her past her trying to scare the bus driver crossing the street with candles and white gowns. That sounds like something that she might have considered doing. But also, she did try and do seances every once in a while, right? Card readings, Ouija boards. Uh, all kinds of bad juju. All kinds of stuff went on black. You talk about she even went out and got herself quite a few black cats. She was <laughs> there. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed this story. Stay tuned for tomorrow. We'll have another one out. And stay tuned for the rest of the Seven days five days now. Mm. I've been Hippie. See you guys next time.